For today's video, we'll be looking at an all-time classic project, an Atherin Blue Box Kit. It's right here. I have an SD40T-2 diesel, and this looks like it is brand new in its box, and basically untouched since it was manufactured. And that was probably about 20 years ago now, just based on the box cover. It's in really nice shape. Of course it would be, being new in the box. So, got the engine there. Got a couple steel handrails. And we've got the parts bag. Along with an, uh, with an exploded diagram, which also gives a little bit of instruction on how to put these things together and tune them up. So there's everything fully unpackaged. And I noticed that the truck details were silver instead of black, so I looked that up real quick and found that Atherin offered these with both the uh, black chassis in trucks or a gray chassis with silver trucks. So it's possible that the parts kits got swapped at some point, but this is the correct parts kit for the SD40T-2. And the only other thing, there's just one of these front handrails missing. There's a little hole in the bag that can happen. But I can very easily replace that with a, another one made from brass, so that's no problem. So let's get started on this thing. And the first thing I'm gonna do is give the chassis a tune-up. One of the nice things about Atherns is that they're very easy to tune up. All you need to do it is a flat blade screwdriver because these things are just snapped together. You almost never find screws in Atherin Blue Box kits. Some of the few exceptions have been the couplers on some of the latest ones. But there is the chassis. Got the gold motor, two huge brass flywheels, the steel contact strip for the right rail, and then the motor touches the chassis to get power from the left rail. And it's the same for the headlight bulb there, which gets grounded from the chassis and then has this uh, contact that touches the top of the contact strip. The first thing I'll do is take off the contact strip here because this is in severe need of cleaning with all that rust on top of it. You don't want rust on that thing because it will prevent electrical contact. So one quick way to do this would be with an abrasive block like my Bright Boy here. Another way is with a wire wheel. So this time around, I'm gonna use the wire wheel to clean it up. And when using a wire wheel, always make sure to wear safety goggles. I say that from experience. Just real gently go across that, get the rust off. Actually, in this case, I think a steel wire wheel will do even more than the brass one there. Let's change that out real quick. Oh yeah, that's even better. This part here is the most critical since that's where the um, contact from the truck touches. There, that's a lot shinier. May not be 100% uniform, but as long as it's got good electrical contact, that's what really matters. A lot of people will replace these contact strips with wires to make the operation more reliable because, I mean, as you saw, they can rust, but there is also a little trick you can do to prevent it from rusting, and I'll show that once we get to putting the chassis back together. So next up, we'll remove the motor and see how that's doing. Just pop the universals off from there. Pull up on the motor. Sometimes it can take a bit of effort to pry it out of there. Sometimes they come up easily. 
sometimes not so much. But that one came out. So on the SD40 chassis, the motor is mounted backwards to account for the difference in gearing from what was Atherin's usual up to that point. So before I run the motor, I'm just going to pull these flywheels off. Usually one of them you can twist off. The other one might take a little bit of prying. Here we go, this should do it. Just one in each side. And off it goes. There. And now the motor can be worked on very easily. And to get inside of it, you just take these plates off. But in this case, since this motor has never actually been run, I don't think that'll be necessary. Well, the fit does feel a little bit loose, so I will adjust these plates a little bit. Let's grab right there with some pliers, bend it in a little more. And that snaps back on with a tighter fit. The brushes look good, springs look good, and it's turning freely. So I'll just add a bit of fresh oil in there. I found the other handrail. I guess it was in the package after all. It just got away from me. Got my transmission fluid here. Or you can use a light motor oil from a company like LaBelle. But for me, this stuff works just fine. Now, power it up real quick. I'd say that runs perfectly. This is probably the first time it's been turned on since it left the factory. So with that working, just press the flywheels back on. And we'll see how these are working. Sometimes these flywheels can be a bit off balance. And if that happens with these, it's actually easier than you might think to do some balancing. Yeah, I feel some good vibration in there. So let's start by seeing if I can do some counterbalancing. So I'll just twist one of them, give it a try, still vibrating. That's a little better. So it looks like the counterbalancing can't be done quite perfectly with these. But sometimes you can get dead on just by giving the little flywheels a little twist until they counterbalance each other. When they're balanced, that reduces noise and wear, so it's definitely something you want. So, let's see what else can be done for these. Test one at a time. I feel a little vibration in this one, but not much. It's usually kind of hard to see the exact point where a flywheel is off balance. So an easy way to find that is to make a marking in it while it's running. So I'll use the edge of a file here. Check a few different spots. It's faint, but I can see that the middle point is right about here. So now that I know where the point of imbalance is, I can take my power drill here and carefully, while holding it straight, make a small hole in the side of the flywheel. And with each small amount drilled, Hook it back up and see if it's gotten better. I 
I think I feel a small improvement there. Not much yet since the hole is small. So drill a little more. All right, I've got the flywheels well balanced. And one thing about balancing is if you go a little too far, just drill another hole in the other side. And if you find there's a different spot, just do the same thing there. And now that I've got them pretty well balanced and then counterbalanced with each other, I made just a little mark in each one so that I can keep them aligned. So now, since the flywheels on these get a little bit loose from pulling them off and putting them back on, put just a touch of super glue onto the shaft. Don't want much, only a small amount. Press the flywheel back on with a bit of twisting. And now do the same for the other one. And the motor is ready to go. Now, get onto the trucks. So these are really easy to remove. Just take your flat blade screwdriver and pry up the worm cover. And the truck comes right off. And there's the worm. And those gears look pretty dry. I mean, there's a little bit of oil in there, but yeah, those are looking kind of dry. So just wipe out that old oil. And we'll take the trucks apart. Side frames just pull off from the sides like that. There's the actual truck, and it's turning freely. It really won't need much of anything, so yeah, just to take off the bottom plate. And now you have full access to the axles, which can just be lifted out. I really don't need to pull the truck apart, but might as well do this one, just so you can see how easy these are to take apart. Usually there's another one or two clips. The SD40 trucks have two clips on the top, and once those are off, then the truck comes right apart and you have access to the gears inside. It looks like the shafts still have oil on them, but as long as it's apart, I might as well get another little drop of oil in each one, just to be sure. Turn that in a little bit. And put it back together. Clips just snap right onto the top there. The wheels are still nice and clean, so I don't need to do anything with those. Now just a drop of oil for each of these bearings. And now, a bit of grease. But you can already see that working in pretty quickly. So now, snap the plate back on, and you can see the grease has worked its way all the way up to the top gear there, but I will add a drop of fresh oil, since that is a steel plate making contact with the chassis. That drop of oil will help to keep it from rusting so it can maintain contact better. Now just a drop of oil for each of these bearings. Place it back into the truck. And snap the cover back on. Then do the same for the other truck. 
Now for the other truck here, I found that it's actually not turning quite as freely. And after examining it, I found that one of these wheels was pressed onto its gear a little too tightly. So it's preventing that one bearing from moving as freely as it should be. So all you do is grab the gear, give the wheel a little twist while pulling out, and that fixes that problem. You just want to make sure the wheels stay engaged. And now with the trucks tuned, things can be put back together. So just put the pad onto the motor, slip that into the other pad, press that down into the holes, and the universals, just make sure those are fit together. Snap that onto the truck. And onto the motor. Now snap the contact strip back on. Now let's give this thing a quick test. Got it set on a piece of track. And that seems to be working nice and smooth. Even got a pretty steady glow from the headlights. So that's a good sign that the electrical pickup is working well. There's just a little running noise, but I think that'll work out with time. And now for the one last little touch on the mechanism. In order to keep those contact strips from rusting and losing contact, I'm adding just a little drop of oil to each one. That oil creates a bit of an oxygen barrier, which helps to prevent rust from forming. But it also still allows the metal to make contact. And now with the chassis running, we can get onto detailing the shell. So I'll start with the plastic parts, like the uh, horn and the lenses. So the horn just presses into the top, scrip it with pliers, and work it in. Now for the rest of the cab part, I'm actually going to take the cab off. I think that'll make it a little easier to work on. Just pry it up like that. One more latch inside. Just take the flat blade screwdriver, do that, pulls right off the top. And that makes getting inside a bit easier. I can also pull this glass piece out for protection. Clip these off gently. Clip two of those, and they give you an extra in case you lose one. Okay, so press these into the front. Looks good. You want that to be about flush with the front. And there's a smaller end to these lenses. You want to make sure to insert that end first so that the large side is in front. Now, the number board lenses. Put these in the same way. Now the fit on these is a little more loose. So I am going to use a touch of glue for them. Just a little brushed in there. Now put it back in. And wants to slide around. There. And the glue will only take a, maybe a minute or two to set that in there. And for the rear headlight lenses, it's the same process. Start it into there. 
and gently press it in. And now moving on to the handrails, I've got the main wires laid out there. Then for the stanchions, they give you a couple different sizes. So you can, before installing them, kind of count out exactly where you'll need them so that you know exactly which ones to grab. And then organize them with their handrails. Okay, I've got them counted out, and they actually give you a few extras in case you lose any or damage any. So, next thing I like to do is thread them all onto their railings. So to make sure they're threaded on in the correct direction, um, starting from the back, make sure that little end is facing in or, well, it's facing inward for the railing. Slip it on there. Just kind of twist it around the edge. And now it's ready to press into the hole. And now with all the stanchions on the railing, you can start by pressing the railing into the hole at each end. This is easiest to do if you give it a little grip with some pliers. Press that one into there. Grip the bottom part. And then press only the bottom into the hole there. If you try to press from the middle of the railing, or the middle of the stanchion, it can actually bend to the stanchion. So you want to do it this way to make sure that they stay nice and straight. Helps it to look a lot better. And once they've all been pressed into their holes, you'll be able to move them back and forth like this pretty easily. So what you'll want to do is get them as straight as possible. You can use the details of the doors along the sides as reference for how straight these stanchions are. That should be good. So now, to make sure those don't lose their place, you want to put a little drop of super glue into each of those joints. So we've got a little on the wire there. And just touch the side. This is the liquid gap filling type glue, so that flowed into there. And with all of them glued, they'll hold nice and straight. And since these handrails are made from steel, they're susceptible to rust, so I would definitely recommend painting them. I'm gonna paint mine. And if you wanna keep the bare steel look, I would still recommend at least brushing them with a bit of clear gloss. And now with all the handrails glued down and right where I want them, I'll give them a quick brushing of paint. So I've got some Union Pacific Gray here. It's acrylic, so it should dry quickly. So just real gently go across each of these railings, being careful not to touch the rest of the paint on the body. This brand of paint, um, Model Flex, is really thin, so it usually takes at least a couple coats before it really starts to look uniform. It's a little hard to tell the gray apart from the steel color, but those parts are all fully painted now. So for the ends here, I'll paint these white. And for that, I'm using some scale coat enamel. And I found that this uh, blend of white paint seems to work best if you add some airbrush thinner to it. So I've got a thinned bottle there. When you try to brush it as is, I found that it's a bit too thick to go on smoothly. But with the thinned paint, you can see here that it actually goes on a lot more easily. It gives you a nice thin coating. And now with the handrails painted, last thing I'm gonna do is brush on a little bit of this dull coat in order to help them blend a little better with the factory paint. 
So just brush a little bit on to each of these stanchions, same as I did with the paint. And this stuff dries very quickly, so in just a moment, you should see that that railing now has a more dull appearance. So I'll just do that for the rest of them. And now all that's left for the details is the truck parts, which I have painted black to match the side frames as well as possible. So there's just uh, two cylinders and then one of these um, struts for each one. And these simply press in place with no need for glue. So just place that on there, making sure both of those holes are aligned. Press in and that part is on. And then it's basically the same thing for the cylinders. Make sure the one hole is aligned. And at the end of it is aligned with the slot, which is a little harder to see. You kind of want to hold it at an angle like this to make sure that the end of it stays in that slot. And then it pops in. Now with all the details in place, all that's left is to install the couplers. So they provide you with a couple horn hook couplers. At least that's what they provided up until maybe the last couple of years that they were doing blue box kits. So the proper way to install these, uh, oops, I accidentally broke it. Well, I guess that just means I'll have to install these KD number fives instead. So to install the KD couplers, just place the spring into the coupler pocket there. Place the coupler on top of that. Make sure that this lip is facing to the back. And then snap it down onto the end of the frame. And that should work just fine. While working on the tuning, I actually found that the uh, window piece here, this back section, actually doesn't allow the uh, contacts around the headlight to work very well. So I'm just going to clip out the middle of this and then slip that back into the cab. And I think that'll take care of the lighting problems. And with all that finished, take the shell and chassis Get things all lined up. And snap it back together. And the blue box kit is now finished and ready to run. Now let's see how this does pull in a few cars around the layout. linked. Takes off nice and smooth. Got a bit of that familiar wrap and brow, but that is a smooth runner. So there you go, all the basics of building an Athern kit. Follow all these steps and you should end up with a good runner that will last you for a very long time.